turn things on and um i don't know whether you guys wanted to rest a full night and get all your spells back and then go to the gallery the next night didn't have to i think that's i think that's what um uh rackernash alluded to when he met with uh avis at the at the church the day that she returned so i guess this is the day after she's already cast it uh, yeah so um you know he's going to be there pretty much every night and now that um lord Denal knows you're alive um you don't imagine it's anything too too pressing So if you wanted to take an extra day, heal up, get all your ability damage taken care of. I think uh, Luna might still have a little bit kicking around too. Or that might actually just be her charisma. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's natural charisma. Is anybody else down? Uh, let me check here. I think Asami's got well, a little bit of strength, but that'll that'll go away overnight on its own. Yeah. Just the one point left. Yeah. Combo. I think just Avis has a little bit kicking around. Um, so, so do you want me to give you guys an overnight rest? You guys want to shut it down for the afternoon kind of thing after? Or do you want to head out on the highway? Head out uh, the we'll mean street. We, we need we were have a night out, planning right? on talking in my temple because we needed to have a conversation about stuff. That's true, oh, too. Yeah. So let's say you're there. I think we already received an overnight rest because... Yeah, you received an overnight rest when you first came out of... Um, oh, you mean getting another one? Yeah. yeah. Just for ability score damage? Ah, ability score damage and... Um, okay. Someone's still kicking around some wounds. I don't well, know. we got eel spells that we can take care of that. Yeah, for sure. You never know when adventure's going to jump on you, though, so I don't want yeah. to spend your resources. <laughs> I think our healer is the only one hurt. It does appear that way. Yeah, next time we fight like things that drain ability damage, we need to be ready. <laughs> but we had, we had no idea that was going to be in there. The, I don't think there is any way to avoid, avoid that one. Um, other than maybe like displacement, which is kind of beyond you guys right now. Blur, maybe. Uh, well, having the ability to restore it which i don't think we had anyway so. luna is still wizard one wizard four yeah i, said, I haven't fixed this shit. i'm just gonna let Night. naz do whatever i think will i think i think their will is being calculated as if they are doing that yeah i fixed that up i did fix the double I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think. Yeah, no, it's fixed now because. Actually, no. The only reason we have the same will is because my PRC actually does give me a, a, a two at the first level. So I think Luna is still. Uh, their will is still a little bit weird. No, Luna starts. Wizards start with two at first. It goes to one at third. Uh, so fifth level should be plus four plus her. Two, yeah, that's true. That's right. Yep. That's so, hold on. What do you What do you mean by that? Because they should have only a plus four to their will. Oh, you're right. Plus you're their right. wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. Does he have rank? The wisdom, wisdom is the wisdom is ten, I think. Oh. Are you allowed to take different kinds of wizard classes? Like uh, different types of wizard archetypes, one wizard archetype and then another d wizard archetype. No, you I, just pick the one archetype. If if they allowed it, it would start at one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'd still be casting yeah, you'd... second level spells though. Yeah, wouldn't be. Yeah, stacked. you can. Uh, you... Yeah, you can't uh, do that with archetypes. I, I think that was At least just not unless they uh, attack. Yeah, I, th I think. Let's see here. I mean, just double check. He may have accidentally clicked the wrong thing. I'm pretty sure that's yeah. what's happened. Yeah, it's yeah. not a major concern. Yeah, that should be plus four. And same thing with your uh, 
The, uh, it's not a major concern necessarily. The base attack probably didn't get affected. Plus three you should be plus three or plus two. That's the only thing that really is affected by it. So plus two should only be okay. It's just the bones of it. Um, How do we know what his class yeah. is? He's not here to tell us. It is the um, conjurer. Um, Teleportation, teleportation I think. Yeah. And it looks like he dragged initially Wizard 1. He probably imported a sheet, um, despite us going through the specifics. That's mm. okay. I'll just fix it up on CMD. Should be one less, too. Yeah. Not 33, should be 7. At some point, we may want to clean up the sheet bathroom. and just make it Wizard 5. Yeah, but then I got to go and do all that work. Yeah. We'll have to ask uh, Luna about that. CMD is not. Base attack bonus is 2. All right. There we go. Everything else looks. Yeah, we're good. All right. Church of Etia. Am I, I'm, I'm saying it wrong. I know it. Ita. 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 I got to think like yeehaw and go Yita. I hear that a lot here in New Mexico. <laughs> yeehaw? Mm -hmm. I, I live pretty close to the Texas border. Oh, okay. Church of Yita, just after dusk. Street of Oh, that's right. You guys were just about to now my memory's coming back. So um, just about to pull in and um this is where Malagree's kind of dropped you guys off and um Zed encouraged him to save the prophet. The the madman preaching at the, the intersection of um, Carter Street and the Street of the Gods. Yeah. So as you guys all kind of round the corner and um, get to the front of the Church of Ita, you see a cowled figure that from this distance appears an awful lot like the old man that was Malagrees. He walks out to the middle of the street. Um the middle of the intersection and the um the prophets um the prophets acolytes there's nine of them kind of all surrounding him almost in a like a protective circle like facing out to the crowd and, and just like nodding and and um encouraging people to come closer and listen they kind of part um as the old man waves his hand and then he holds his hand out, and for the first time, other than when interacting with Zed, um, the prophet stops, and the old man just kind of reaches his hand out and takes the prophet by the arm and just starts walking him away. The nine acolytes close ranks. One steps to the middle. And looks like he might be taking up the mantle of the prophet while Malgris and this disheveled, mentally destroyed man disappear into the crowd. So they'll be okay, right? Rackernash comes from around the corner and says, Who will be okay? Hey. Sundown on the Street of the Gods. <laughs> what are you rascals up to? Well, I was going to come see you in a bit. 
Uh, the boss man's busy tonight. I came by to tell you not to drop by. Uh, tomorrow night, though. Are you busy tonight? I am not. Um, he is engaged, so to speak, and I have the evening to myself. Um, Avis kind of nods toward the temple. Come on, let's get into a safer place. He says, uh, along. he says, Pool's Taverns just across the street if you want me to go grab some wine. Yeah, we might need that. All right, give me a couple minutes. He, uh, kind of scoots off. There's, um, there's like a large disheveled or a large kind of, um, of disheveled is the best word for it. Um, it looked like it was at one point in time, a rather grandiose kind of temple. Maybe one of the very first temples that was ever built on the Street of the Gods. But its time has just beaten it down. And he takes, um, it, it changes hands like every every couple weeks. Um, the rent there is uh, it's a little more than something at this end of the street would normally bear and people who think that they're going to rise quickly go there and they either fail it fast or they move on quickly and he uh he goes around the side of that building and kind of disappears down an alleyway uh heading towards um you know that up there in that neighborhood is the gallow fields and the um nightmare alley as it were but you think mm -hmm. that uh, Pulse Taverns in the neighborhood, just just uh, just in front of that, just south of that. So, hey, this is gonna kind of guide everybody else in. Cause this was the plan, but we're gonna go talk. So Zed follows in and says, "Okay, so let's talk." Avis will lead him back into the kitchen, um, away from her two acolytes at the moment. Okay. They're still doing their thing. Yeah, Sami's definitely following everybody. Yeah. Kitchen. I'm hungry. There's the temple there. There's probably some food around as well because it's just, yeah. Yeah. Look at the map, I recognize this. <laughs> <laughs> it is. There's also an upstairs too, which is, um, Avis's place. Yeah, space. exactly. That's why we're not going upstairs. It's Avis's place. <laughs> There's, um... Let's see here. Yeah, there's like a little table area, too. Near the back door. <coughs> so Zed grabs some bread off the table and... Avis motions to the... the the larger table to sit at. He sits down. Gets, and she gets some cu cups out because she knows there's a bottle of wine coming. <laughs> or at least one. At least one, yeah. So there's something going on besides while we've been gone and the prophet and she kind of this insane festival? Is that the best word for it? Yeah, there's uh the festival is about to start in um on Carter Street. A lot of the a lot of people who come to Lancomar for this the festival specifically. Um some of them seem to have um kind of fallen on hard times so to speak mm -hmm. or it's not <clears throat> um and maybe they've um succumbed to something it used to be that um anybody who spent any time in Lancamar around this time of the year all the uh, all the taverns and all the hostels and all the uh, the inns and the boarding houses and stuff like that would fill up quickly. Um, but it seems like 
from what Avis has seen, there seems to be an unusually large transient population um, who are attempting to stay awake through the use of a new narcotic by the name of Shiver. And other means, too. The shiver seems to be the most um, diabolical of the yeah. methods. Talking about the Gallo Square and shiver, and there's some concerns in my, I guess, in the yard, in the backyard, it feels like, but across the way. I don't know, we disappear for a month and I'm just glad this place is still standing at this point. So what do we plot in here? We're um here to talk about like what the next move forward is and how we're going to do that and when yeah and avis is bringing up her concerns with shiver as well as what's oh. going on in you said guillotine park uh gallo the gallo fields gallows yes uh the gallo fields yeah, um, there's yeah. something and because that's literally less than a, you know it's across the way from my temple pretty much yeah the gallo fields here right around are right here and, and then Avis' temple is the green dot on the bottom side. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> of the street of the gods, so it's like... There's something weird going on while we've been young. I say block, same block, but it's like... I know it's bigger than the block. Yeah, it's... um, It's probably like... um, I don't know, maybe even a tenth of a mile between the Street of the Gods and Hazy Street on its longest stretch. I do have it mapped out in distance. See what it comes to. It's quite a, quite yeah, a bit. So yeah. Avis is concerned about this. Yeah, it's a thousand feet, so. Yeah. That arrow is a thousand feet. And we spent most of our day, what, in a freaking mage's sanctum? So Rakanash comes in and puts down. Um, he's got like, um, like a small, not a box so much as a... Crate? Yeah, kind of like a half crate. And he's got um, six bottles of real, real dirt cheap wine. <laughs> like... Uh, old English, maybe, kind of like that kind of almost like almost like a malt wine. He seems rather proud of himself. <laughs> Hilarious. Maybe rock. Maybe you can send some light on this rock and ashes with the. Uh been out of it for a while yeah we um it's messy out there shiver yeah it's uh it's not new uh, shiver's been around for a while um yeah uh, you want to go fast take a little shiver you want to you want to keep your wits about you for an extended period of time. You get some shiver. It's, um, it seems to be a different kind, though. Um, maybe a different brand or a different... Uh, maybe it's just more prevalent. It was always a little harder to get. I'm not ashamed to say that I've taken it a time or two. Just to get through those long nights when you have to watch. You know, you need the... Uh, 
you need to stay focused for five or six hours, something really tedious going on. And um, you never know when things are going to kick off. So um, this seems, um, from what I can tell, it's a little cheaper. So it's maybe kind of boiled down or watered down, I guess you would say, watered down. Um, there's some some rumors that the sales around here are controlled by some group called the Brothers of the Spider. I haven't been rooting around too much. I've had some things going on, but just in my little bit of time spent in the area, you kind of pick up a thing or two. Are these spiders new? Yeah. Yeah, apparently there was a big uh, big schism between the um, the spider god, the Temple of Mog, and the um, there's some kind of like offshoot. Uh, quickly out of character, uh, just so I see, just so I can see if I'm remembering this correctly. Malagrees, as well as the Sorcerer's Guild, did they say they were having trouble? Because they said that they, uh, I'm, I remember them mentioning a spider guild being another group of ma magi. Yeah, yeah, he mentioned, um, your group as one of the three that they had noted as being troublesome. There was a group of, um, sorcerers or mystics who called themselves the Brotherhood of the Spider, and there That's was a th <laughs> and there was the third group, um, um, those who hear. They call themselves. You remember um, Popoff had some dealings with. Uh, those who hear, and the also the um, it might have had some some connection to the the Church of Shithakwa. It might have had uh, something to do with that idol that got stolen from him, from his apartment, or maybe that uh, maybe that box, that unopened box from Popoff's house. Pop off in his journals, noted uh, the speaker in dreams, which is um, something that the those who hear seem to venerate. Hmm. And those are the three groups of what, sorcerers. What did he call our group? Didn't give you a name. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just called us troublesome. <laughs> <laughs> what? Who says we're sorcerers? <laughs> he didn't say sorcerers, he just said troublesome. Mm. I think he did refer to us as a some form of group of magi. I don't remember his exact wording or phrasing. I don't either, to be honest. I was talking a lot. <laughs> <laughs> You also, yeah, the you, only one that was sitting there that wasn't interested was Avis because they're like, yeah, no, it's, it's not for me. Well, Ava, Avis is me. actually a wizard too, believe it or not, in strictest Lankamar kind of mm -hmm. parlance. Um, the one thing he did when Malagrees was talking to you guys, the one thing he did note was the um, he reached out to you guys as opposed to these other two groups. These, uh, these other two groups he considered kind of like um, sort of like fringe fringe guild kind of groups. Whereas your group, he wasn't really sure how to categorize it. And he thought that of, of the three, your group might be the most amenable to whatever offer he was making. Did he state or imply that he and his guild were uh, at odds 
with the other two sorceress groups. I can't imagine that they're super friendly. No, they're definitely. He said, if the, if whoever remains of these three groups, um, ideally would be kind of uh, either given an offer to get right with the guild or um, get destroyed. Mm. So what I'm hearing is, if they're out of the way, okay, I'll take that in, take that in consideration. Mm -hmm. That was the idea. And he said that um, the guild could spend their resources on dealing with these sorts of things, but sometimes it's best just to let things sort themselves out, and then you get a better idea of who you're dealing with. Mm. So then, I'm gonna, I'm gonna further. Unless you had something you'd rather ask first, I am getting the sense that the Shiver and the Spider Clan, the Spider Cult, the Spider, the Spider Clan control Shiver. I think was said. Yeah, getting rid of Shiver would do good, or at least this batch, obviously. Yeah, and getting rid of the, those who the here odds is trying to get rid of all the thing. Shiver is probably difficult, but. This particular batch would be good to get rid of. That it's a little too close for home for Avis. It's the second group of drug dudes we got to rid off the streets. <laughs> Rackernash says, um, "You know, Shiver's been around for I don't know a long time. I've... Why is it so popular now? Why do people not want to go to sleep?" Where? Um, because they don't want to dream. I think that's what I understood from somebody who was around with me. Yeah. You said the Brother Spider was new, correct? Yeah, it's an offshoot. Um, some sort of um, intersectarian violence took place between. Do you have any information about them? Uh, I don't really work on the Street of the Gods. I, I know that we can, if we ought to, wanted to right now, we could walk by the, the Temple of, of Mog. Uh, we can only be admitted on their holy days, and we have to be, um, as far as I know, you have to be indoctrinated before you go into the into the ap actual temple. So I try to think of the name of the offshoot. Um, Mog something. It's got a, a Mog something. I can't remember the rest of it. Is there a way to get in through the sewer system like we did with the other things? I don't know. I could, um... Hmm. I guess I could make some guild inquiries. That one might take me a couple days. Well, just be careful you ask, because we don't have the word to get out that that's the thing. But, you know, it, it's an option, at least. Maybe. Yeah, it might be... Um, put you in a compromising position, Heather. I appreciate that. I don't like to be compromised. Um, yeah, I don't know. I could... Uh, I don't know who would know. Sewers around everywhere, I imagine. If we took a walk up the street, we could probably. Although you probably wouldn't want to just jump into a, a sewer right, right on the street of the gods. It's a good way to get arrested. Uh, Unless sure you're. Uh, one in the alley behind mine somewhere. There's. Um, no, I, 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 well, I, I mean, there's a sewer connection somewhere, uh, probably in the, uh, I don't think there's any around here, though, like an actual, I hadn't noticed one anyway, normally I, I notice these things, but the, that's more of a, it's more of a waste walker guild kind of thing, even the, even the best rogues try to want to stay out of this. The sewers are dangerous. You never know. You never know what's down there. 
Some say there's a whole underworld down there. And this wine that he got is horrible, but it's strong. <laughs> it's horrible, but strong. Yeah, it's like uh, it's, it's like pushing twenty percent, and it's um, it's got this almost like um, if beer and wine had a evil baby kind of taste to it. Which is just strange. And he's throwing it down pretty good. You mentioned that the spiders are new. Are there any other new, or at least relatively new, guilds that we should know about? Or groups? Ah, uh, there's always new religions up and down the street of the gods. The one, the one constant is constant change. The best way to get that information would be the, um... Well, I... Probably the uh, the extortioners, but you kind of have to trick them into telling you because they're not uh, not eager to share their business with outsiders. Where I bought this uh, Pook's Tavern, he's one of the main uh, church extortioners in the town in the city. He's a nasty bit of business, Pook. He's been at it for a lot of years. I see. There's uh there's not many places like this on the street. There's a lot of people preaching and it's what can you do for us as opposed to this place here is a bit of an anomaly. Of course. The, at the rate you're going, you're, if you don't mind me saying, you're probably going to be in this location for a bit. And if you're good with that, then I wholeheartedly support it because uh, you are very helpful. But most of the religions are not looking to be helpful. They're preaching whatever they're preaching. Mm hmm I mean, I intend to be here for a while. Well, that's good. That's good indeed. The people in the neighborhood um, appreciate it. I don't know if you know that or not. Rakanesh, good sir. I'm. I do wonder if you would be able to acquire information about this Brotherhood of Spiders. I could probably find a thing or two out. Well, what, what would you want me to find out? Well, any information could be useful. How many people are there, what their general practices is, where their bases of operations are, that type of thing. Okay, shouldn't be too difficult. Give me a couple days. It is great to hear so. And if we all keep drinking, you might have to stay here tonight. We might not have a choice. He's uh, he's already a little wobbly. No, I'm talking about the others, though. <laughs> How much they're drinking. Yeah. Ragnar has... Arthur's, Arthur's not drinking. But... I feel I like even know. if Arthur wanted to drink, he would see your re your reaction to the piss water. Because I can only imagine that's what Ragnar it tastes like if it's drunk. described as such. Yeah, yeah, it's horrible. Avis is like, oh, this is not bad. This is not the worst thing I've ever had. You've never had rock wine. It's fun. Yeah. 
<laughs> so you, you get yourself a bottle of three dollar wine and you have a good time. That's basically where it's at. I've yeah. been talking Sometimes. and I was muted. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, no, uh, just being oddly quiet. Yeah. I mean, I saw me just. I was wondering. Just yeah. Absorbing <laughs> all this information. <laughs> now, this, uh, Sami's wine tastes delicious. Anybody want some? Uh, <laughs> Presentation is just like poop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. like yep. this is great. <laughs> It'll kick your butt later. <laughs> but um, I would. I really think we need to handle this, especially since we need to, I guess, handle the our competition. Mm. You have competition. I completely. Oh, that's a story to recognize. We'll explain. Forming a guild, oh, are you? All right. Well, we've been uh, propositioned in a guild. Hmm. We'll see. Ah, yes, the uh, the enigmatic man from out of nowhere. The uh, you know him. yeah, he uh, he paid Lord Denal a visit a couple weeks back. While we were gone? While you were gone. We Did thought that uh, we thought that you had left town, uh, Lord Denal and myself. Yeah, it's uh, Mally Grease. Um, and um, he informed us that uh, you may or may not be returning. And that you were close but somewhere far away. And that, In that uh, way of putting it, <laughs> and that he had uh, something to do with it. Uh, at which point, um, he bade me leave, and um, he spoke at length with um, Lord Denau. Lord Denau was rather shaken when I um, Went back into the room later on after he f fetched me. He told me that um, the visit was um, over the death of Popov. And that somehow, despite all our machinations and our, um, our good work to cover it up, um, this Malagrees knew all about it. And he knew about the book. And he knew about our connection with you. And um, a lot of potentially what he knows about you probably came from Lord Denal. He didn't really leave him a choice. Well, then he probably doesn't know as much about me as he thinks. No, oh, probably not. He's probably not listening right now. Mm, probably. Listening. Probably has better things to do than. I'd like to think that he has better things to do. Not a, per a person of such importance. <clears throat> On the topic earlier of competition. Yes, you could say we have some, specifically with the Brotherhood of Spider, for personal reasons. I see, I see. All right, well, uh, I'll find out what I can. Um, right now, all I really know is there's uh, a connection there to the, um, to the Shiver trade. In mostly just in in the Marsh District, I don't uh, the the rest of the city. I haven't really seen um, this level of um, spread. I guess the um, it doesn't seem as prevalent anywhere else. So, 
uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll hit the streets on, uh, in the Marsh District and see what I can learn. And I'll try to Do you have any words of wisdom? Nothing more than what we've discussed. Kind of want to get some information so that we know what to, how to approach wherever we're going. I don't think we want to walk in the front door. Mm-hmm. Of course not. You think Lord Denal will be free tomorrow evening? Yeah, I, be- I believe he probably will. He um, he's quite recovered, and um, it. I think it's it's been good that. Um, You know, despite despite the the frightening and some, I don't know if it was the threatening nature of the visit or not, but uh, it's almost like the secret's out and he's relieved. Did you let him know of our return? Yeah, I did. I did. He seemed uh, seemed quite pleased. He was um, he was planning on hosting tonight, um, but uh, something uh, business came up. Some uh, something with his father. So I was just fortunate that I uh, I ran into you. I was going to leave a note with um, one of the acolytes. And I was going to stop by the last chance. No, you don't have to make us stop. No, I don't. I have the rest of the night off. I think it's called the fat chance. The fat chance. I like it. (laughs) No, I don't think there's anything else we can get done this evening. Shall we spend the day and meet up at Denal's tomorrow night, then? No. Yes. Yeah, let's do that. Sounds like a good course of action. You gotta finish this bottle, though. Yes, yes. Finish your bottle. I'll be back. Why don't you have mine as well? (laughs) Done. I haven't even opened it yet. Perfect. You're a good sword, Arthur. A good sword. I've always said that about you. <laughs> Say here, Rack your nest. I'm going to get close I'm glad someone thinks so. <laughs> Is it past mm-hmm. shop opening hours? Uh, it's Lankamar. You just knock on the door. If there's someone in there, shop is open. <laughs> if someone so, answers you, then yeah. Avis is going to like escort everybody out of the temple and get it locked down and go back and check <laughs> so Yeah. Yeah, definitely. The uh, the acolytes go home and uh, if there was anybody else kind of hanging around and stuff like that, they give them the last little bit of whatever and ha- yeah, have a good night and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Anybody want to do anything? Thought about going shopping, but I think I'll wait till after we get the information. So, in okay, case there's something more I need. Alrighty. Yeah, Arthur just put most of his money into a, uh, not a bank, but I forget the exact terminology for yeah, it. Yeah, the money lender. Yeah, and he feels a uh, distinct lack of weight in his pockets, and he considers looking for a way to fix that but probably can't find anything in a day what are you looking for Arthur feels that in the future he's probably going to need a lot of capital uh, a lot of capital especially if he wants to become a sorcerer uh huh Mm. so he kind of uh I imagine the first a couple of days, he's just going to look around, uh, just look around for whatever opportunities are there and you know, gauge his options. Um, I'm not sure what you mean. Mm. Oh, well. What kind I'll of... Op- do that another time then. No, no. I, I, I was kind of typing and I missed it. You're looking to... I've already forgotten myself. Yeah. 
The idea has already escaped me. You were looking, you're going to be looking for a way to gain some capital, so you just wanted to see what was going on out there that you could possibly yeah. do to get some monies in your pockets. Okay, like uh, yeah. like an investment or um, gambling or you buy a property you and then what? rent it or... I don't have a ton of money on me right now, but I may as well try some gambling if we're going to the last chance anyway. I think Asami's probably going there at some point tonight. That's, I was going to mm. go and perform and then call it a night. But, so. I'll see how well a luck favors me. All right. <laughs> All right. So. Here's uh, a question. Yes. When a bard does, ins does inspire courage or any of their body performances, that's not visible magic because it doesn't have an aura. Right. So no trying one to would play know. Lady Luck over there, or yeah, that no Try one would here. know that such benefits are being bestowed upon yeah. anybody. Just I'm performing. That's that, right? That'd yes. Be... Cool. How lucky do you feel? <laughs> I love this. We'll find out. You know, I just made an adjustment to this character and inspire confidence. I had to take off in the trade for something else that would have been the perfect thing to give you it gives you a bonus to a skill check yeah yeah wanted to have a little bit yeah. more offensive capabilities so i traded it and uh now i can't give you what i really wanted to give you i have to see if something yeah, else works. i don't have a i don't have a ton on hand right now but i feel this could snowball if i can do this correctly yeah then the idea of us not acquiring all that wealth in the uh, the Undercity gives me a sick taste in my mouth, so I need to recoup those losses. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, I don't think giving a plus a bonus to attack roll, that doesn't work on dice. It's more of a skill check is the proper thing, right? Yeah. Unless yeah, you're a demoralizing but... attack, <laughs> then I don't think it'll work. Unless yeah, it was like I one know. of the one of the basement games where they're th like throwing knives or something like that. Yeah, that makes sense. No, nope, I can't mm. help it. It just looked pretty. <laughs> Sorry, but so if you ask why I'm not using Inspire Confidence, that's why I traded it for a different ability. I see. Yeah. Okay. All right, Arthur. What's your game? What are our options? Because preferably something that has a social angle to it. Okay. So, um... I'm not sure how to... Well, I can sit down and start playing poker with you if you wanted to, but that doesn't... As far as the game room goes, doesn't really work too well. So let's uh, let's figure something out amongst ourselves. And, um... In, I, in, I, in real life, don't know how to play poker. Oh, so. okay. Well, you're probably lucky you're not playing against me then. Um... So why don't we um, have like a, a th like a three round game where you you make a, a bet um, based on your first roll, and then maybe well the social aspects you want to intimidate, right? Intimidate, bluff. Uh, what do you have? Preferably those. Those two, okay. Um, I'm particularly good at those two. Okay, so let's see. Um, so let's say that we both um, I'll I'll roll a a twenty sided dice to myself, and you can roll a twenty sided dice to the room. And this is uh, this is kind of like a, a hand that you're representing. And how and then how much do you want to bet at this point? Uh, what are the what is the price range of this place? Like, is it being done in uh, Eagles, Smear Ducks? Uh, Eagles on the first floor and Smear Ducks on the second. Uh, Gold Rilks is the private room on the third floor. I'm going to go... Let's start with 25 Eagles. Okay, 25 Eagles. You're playing against uh, Nark and Groove, the uh, the two half-orc goons that are there, like, every night. 25 eagles and um let's say that on the initial on the initial bet everybody kicks in like five and 
Uh, there's there's yeah. two other players, and so it's uh, five and then twenty five, or five raised by twenty to a total of twenty five. Yeah, exactly. And um, okay. so everybody who kicked in five, so you're up, so you win fifteen right there. Without even having to go any further, you 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 bet that out, and everybody just kind of anticipated that you were going to win that. So you're up fifteen bronze angles. I think I'm getting the hang of this. All right. Next round, everybody kicking in five. Okay. Let's see here. I think I still have Narc stats. Where are we here? JKL Lankamar. See the gooner, see the let's see here. He's the gambler. Yeah, he's the gambler. Okay. Got it. So for this one, um Narc bets ten. I'll and raise it to fifteen. Okay, the two other people drop out. And then um, give me a... Give me a bluff or intimidate. Oh, in that case, I will. Okay, he folds the hand. So you are up 25. 25 bronze angles from that hand. Yeah, Arthur just scooping that into his little pile. I assume we're playing with chips or nope. maybe even just the coins themselves. Just the coins themselves. And uh, we'll just do this a few more times. And then what I'll do is um, I'll either double your winnings or losings total. All right. So we're at uh, I think 15 and 25, so we're at 40 right now, right? I believe so, yeah. Okay. All right, so this this hand here, uh, you get into a big bidding match and you clean out um, one of the side competitors, and you make um, sixty five bronze eagles in total. In total. In total. So mm, plus okay. so plus the forty from before, so you got one hundred and five. Oh, okay. All righty then. Arthur, now with twice the coins he had prior, thinks to himself, I should do this more often. So the other guy uh, that isn't Narc, he quits. And uh, Narc wants to know if you want to go double or nothing on uh, a coin flip. Just a coin flip of the coin. He's got a he's got a stack of bronze eagles. He'll count out a hundred and five of them versus your stack of a hundred and five. Just a, I'll flip on one condition. What's that? Is a uh, oh, I forget his right now. I'm forgetting his name, but the owner. Yeah, the owner of the fat pants. There's a there's a croupier uh, there that uh, that's dealing the cards. They can officiate that. Yeah. Is that okay mm. with you? Only if he, only if he flips the coin. Oh, okay. As I'm just gonna slam the money on the table. Okay, for sure. Um, Asami, do you have anything that um, affects like luck or anything? The spark confidence is the closest thing. Uh, just like like any spells or uh, anything that's like. Um... Take another look at my list here. I don't have guidance. That would probably do it. Or, you know, provide some degree of benefit. Yeah. But I don't have that. Let me take a quick peek. Um, 
touch of great. No, I won't do it. Uh, heroism might. Well, that's attack rolls, saves, and skill checks. Yeah, I could do heroism. Yeah, there you go. All right. So, oh yeah, Sami walks by and be like, "Hey, good luck," and taps you on the shoulder. <laughs> okay. So what we'll do is uh, we'll roll a d20, and I'll let Arthur roll twice. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I, there's no token to click on it, but it does plus two to attack rolls, saves, and skill checks. Okay, so you can roll twice with plus two, and uh, Narc will roll on a d20 once. It lasts 50 minutes, so you're good to go for a bit. Okay. So i got to be a 16, or an 18. Oh, mine stopped yeah, on a 20. Yeah. Okay. So now you have you've gained a hundred or two hundred and ten gold pieces or gold or uh, bronze eagles. Pardon me, two hundred and ten bronze eagles. And then at some point, like then you gamble throughout the night, and you're on a hot streak and you're winning, and you double that again. So you have four hundred and twenty bronze eagles as winnings. So that's the equi- Arthur with that's the equivalent of like four gold rogues, one. right? So it's a I decent, believe so, yeah. decent night. Forty-two. As silver. much as I would love to, as much as I'd love to continue, I think I should leave your wallets alone for now. Yeah, you might not want to walk home alone. <laughs> <laughs> While well, this is happening, other than the brief good luck tap. Oh, well, zombies pretty much wanting to perform. So. Sure, yeah. yeah. See generally how the whole night goes here. Yeah. So one check or? Yeah, just one general check. Uh, not very good. That's oh. still, I think only uh, for every five past the first DC 15, I think you make. So you make, um, let's see here. You make ten bronze eagles. Yeah, not a night is off. Pretty decent night. That's uh that's a silver smear duck. It'll be enough to get food. <laughs> so here's a question. Yes. And it probably defined somewhere over the years and I don't know the true answer to this. But if you take food and you stick it in say a bag of holding or an item such as a bag of holding does it does time pass i don't know the answer to that one so it's uh um, i took a muffin and stuck that muffin in in my heavy haversack and pulled it out three months later would it be rotten and disgusting or will it be just as i put it in i don't know if time actually passes in like a handy haversack well, because it's interdimensional, uh, it's an interdimensional space. That's yeah. why I asked. Would you, yeah. since when you rip it open, it creates a rift to the astral plane. Would you say it goes? Would you say that inside is similar to there? Yeah, I would. Yeah. Because. Because I'm thinking. Because. Food because in the astral, because in the astral plane, nothing ages. Okay. Period. Yeah. yeah. It's where I was getting with this, but uh, I could see the argument on both sides that you didn't want to break the game by putting juicy steak in my bag and then pulling out a juicy steak three months later. Yeah, that would be horrible, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the idea of it, it goes in there and it goes in a stasis. Yeah, uh, yeah I like that. So I want to start going shopping because I'm not getting caught in a dungeon of food again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem. You can also buy like preserved food stuff like that, but you know for a fact that you don't have to now if you're um, if you're keeping all your. Yeah, you still may as well just in case you uh, that bag is destroyed or something. Yeah, it's good preparation. Yeah. All right. Thanks for that clarification. No worries. Shopping first thing in the morning. For sure. Tasty cinnamon rolls and muffins. All right, so you, you spend as much as you want on uh, food and um, you get as much as you want. Um, anybody else have any daytime activities that they wanted to engage in? Just the usual. That she does in the temple. All right. Around. Okay. 
Uh, Arthur, I imagine you probably want to change a lot of that um, bronze into silvers. Yeah, I'll exchange 300 of that into silver smear ducks. Okay, so that'd be like 30. Yeah, I'll get 30 smear ducks. Yeah, if, if Fatty will do it uh, without a fee. He's good like that. Yeah, I will. Arthur's going to wait until after uh, Asami's performance is done. Does Asami does Asami rent a uh, rent a room here? Does yeah, Asami she she house? she lives yeah, up on the fifth floor. Yeah. Yep. Mm. You've you've probably stayed at Asami's room before. Hmm. Assuming she'll allow that again, I'll just go along with her. That's fine. Yep, you gotta protect your winnings. I don't charge rent. <laughs> <laughs> you have to sleep on the floor though so see, I'll make muffins, sweet rolls things like this pastries these like little f delicious foods that well I figure like three to five days worth in a bag okay mm. absolutely yeah there's uh there's bakeries and um food markets everywhere for quantity it's just one quantity is a day's worth so i'll put five and that'll be five days worth of that stuff plus the you know trail versions okay in the if you have her sex you could probably dump the spider out if you Although... i assume we devoured that <laughs> <laughs> actually i don't think you I needed to fun. yeah you didn't uh you killed the, the spider yeah. on the same day that you left so um... oh, yeah so yeah definitely don't need to be hauling that around <laughs> I'll feed it to like. I don't know if anyone ever wants it, but I'll leave it out for the squirrels or something. Yeah, no yeah, it. the neighborhood dogs know, will be all over. The chef there can make you something really good out of it. That's true too. I always think that like, um, like spiders and scorpions and stuff like that are gross, but then okay. I've had lobster and crab that are delicious. I was about to say, I bet it tastes like lobster. I would imagine so, too. Yeah, yeah. One foul could make up a... Oh, where'd you get this? He's, he's like, overjoyed. Yep. So I'm going to buy more trail rations, too. But since it all goes in the bag, it's not necessarily a big tree. Okay, cool. Yep, spend what you want. Get what you want. Yeah. I'm not worried I'm about... No well, yeah. that's going to cost. I'll just do an estimate. Yeah. Yeah, just there we go. That ought to be fair. Yeah, something broke. So the um, the twenty ninth of the second month of the year is the. It's kind of like a special day. Um, in the Lankamar calendar that they only add every four years. It's, um, and it's, it happens to be the day that they kick off the festival on the Carter street and it goes for the, the better part of the, uh, the entire third month. Usually Peter's out near the end. Um, when festival fatigue kind of sets in and people start wanting to get their street back and the business and stuff like that. They've kind of had it with, with uh, everybody who's come to the town to spend their money has already spent their money by around the last week or so. So people get kind of sick of it. But the first few weeks, it's a um, pretty festive atmosphere. Um, the, the first day, um, <clears throat> Rakunash excuses himself in the morning and he's, uh, he's kind of in rough shape. He's going to go to his place and sleep it off. Um, he says that he will do his best to um, reprocess the long ass. He's going to do his best to um, find a few things out before you guys meet tonight. Um, but he thinks he's going to be sick. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, I think I can fix that. Oh, you probably want to fix yourself. Let's do an overnight rest for everybody. All right. 
Um, what spells are you gonna take today, Avis? I don't know. <laughs> I, need to, I need to fix myself still. You still do, yeah. Uh, one for sure. Um, the dexterity doesn't matter at all. It doesn't affect you negatively. Yeah, I'm gonna do it's, one. it's gonna go on its own. But if um, you roll a one, though, you could still. So what? It's a D four. Yeah. Well, like I say, you can you can always spend another hour and, and read. Ah, uh, it's a two. Two. Okay, so that would put you at. Uh, s Let's see here. So give you a six. That yeah. Me then. That, that wouldn't. Af yeah, it's perfect. Okay. So that you, works for me. So you get an extra second level spell slot that you don't have to spend on lesser restoration. Yay. <sighs> So saw me out shopping. A um, lot of a um, lot of activity on Carter Street today. So, yeah. so if I wanted a disguise kit, that would be like kind of more. You wouldn't go in there saying "disguise me." It would be kind of like a makeup kit. Yeah, right? you know, you know where you could get it's that. Common and not not cringe or. Like someone buying that wouldn't be like a giant signal to like this is a problem, you know. No, but you're uh, you're an actor. Yeah, yeah. It's so yeah, if you went to the midnight theater, um, you could definitely get the equivalent of a disguise kit. Yeah. Uh, did I ever get to? Let's see here. Stories. Do we ever get to your... Uh, you wanted to become a guild member of the Sorrowful Blah Blah Blahs. Look into it, yeah. Yeah, um, all right. Let's see here. Because I don't think the others are really open to, to her. No. They are not. She lacks the necessary equipment, and a disguise kit won't help. That. <laughs> Let's see here, guilds. Well, let's see. You want to go the Mulan method? Okay, so the uh, the society of joyous and sorrowful comedians, rapturous play actors, graceful dancers, and melodious songsters. Uh, let's get the. Um, I'm gonna write that down again, so I don't. Society of. Let me see. Melodious. The society of joyous. Let me just copy it and paste it. How's that? Oh, that'll, that'll help. I'll screw it up when they ask. It's probably <laughs> on the test. What's the name of our guild? The, uh, yeah. There we go. Oh, I can't copy paste that. Oh, maybe I can. Okay, so let's see Good. here. How much? Let's, let me dig into my lack of our notes here. didn't record it all right so let's see here the It is a uh, entrance fee is um, to become like a full member. It's forty silver smear ducks, and it's one silver smear duck per month. So it's it's pretty extensive. To come what is one received for that cost? 
you can work around town. Um, you might have I like have a certificate or something like that. Yeah, you would actually become uh, automatically a journeyman. Um, so your social rank would increase. You would go from just like a, like a, like a street performer to like a, a noted musician. Okay. Um, oh. uh, 40 40 silver smear and it's one silver smear duck per month as the uh, to do and and you would get access to items that are related to the guild like they'd be happy to sell you like a disguise kit or okay so I don't know what the cost would be of that in the converted let me find out for you and, I'm uh, sure I've included it. How would how would we remember the monthly fee? You just pay ahead of time, and you're good for so long if you want. Okay. So if it's forty. Forty for the initial, and say if you want to pay for until you're probably not going to remember to is um, yeah. let's say fifty total. Yeah, that'll get you just, to the end of the year. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that, and then. Uh, at that point, it'll just it'll come out of anything I gain from performances. Sounds good. So I'm paying fifty. So. That is what I, I hand them over. Here's a bag of fifty silver dollars. Oh, no, it's not just about that either. We've uh, we've heard all about you and your. Um... Your fabulous talents and stuff like that. We have to put on a performance at the Midnight Theater. The uh, the festival's just begun. We're gonna get you on stage. You're gonna give us a give us a firm twenty minutes. If uh, we're not in a time crunch where I'm supposed to meet up with everybody with the party, then sure. Yep, you're not fine. Until tonight, you're good. Um, I will put the best foot forward by doing a flute performance first. Okay, so disguise kit is fifty, okay. fifty I'm silver smear ducks. Okay, I could do that. that's another fifty. Great. I think it's fifty gold pieces in regular D and D. So I've thrown so, that into the um, into the party sheet. You can grab that off there. Oh, okay. And then when you are ready, sir, you can give us a perform. Give us your performance. I had made up a inventory spot for this thing. So I gotta find what I made up and give it. Do this check that I'll find it. It's okay. Skills. All right, here we go. See uh, jazz flute, a la the anchor man. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little better. Yeah, it's well received. Twenty minutes of jazz flute with Asami in the uh, in the one a in the one p.m. slot at the midnight <laughs> theater. Um, followed next by, um, let's see, um, uh, what do they call the people that, uh, go into the crowd and say, ah, I see the, uh, there's a person with the letter J. He wants you to, uh, clean your room on Tuesday. What do they call those guys? Oh, uh, some kind of announcer, right? Caller, crier? No, like, uh, almost like a psychic, but... Um, they're clearly just making it up, and people want to believe exactly what they're telling them. Uh, yeah, I don't know the the name for that. I don't know the name of it either, off the top but of my head. She engaged on stage in her entertainer outfit, not in her armor. You know? Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Actually, actually, your armor could be uh, your entertainment outer outfit if you wanted it to be. Jazz flute, lady in leather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see. 
for that would not have been her first choice for this performance, but yeah, maybe later. That's a different kind of performance at a different time of day, with a different rating. There is um, there's also like a grand theater on Carter Street as well. the uh, The Midnight Theater is just kind of like the um, uh, kind of like the less formal. Mm-hmm. We have um, kind of impromptu performances, kind of thing. So while I'm there, I'm not asking, but I'm listening. Yeah. And I'm trying to listen to see if anyone mentions anything about, like, the subject matter in which we are investigating. Not that I think anyone present is involved, but maybe how rumors travel and gossip happens. Yeah, for sure. And it's it, and, and based on where the Midnight Theater is, which is, uh, if you consult the, the map, the Midnight Theater is right close to where you guys are. So kind of at the epicenter of um I, I imagine some patrons were probably affected by the the drug in question exactly and probably if where they got it or whatever that kind of thing yeah um and also affected by the um you see um see one person um one of the performers backstage um looks better rested than some of the others but they have a haunted look like they don't have like big circles under their eyes it looks like they've been sleeping but you don't know whether it's worse to be trying to actively stay awake or actually going to sleep um it's a it's a young man he's probably about Maybe a couple years younger than you. And uh, he's a juggler. And um, his hands aren't shaky or anything like that. He seems pretty pretty much together. Um, but he, he looks um, morose. He doesn't look like he's um, dealing with it well. Mentally, as opposed to people avoiding it physically and then there's other people that are just clearly jacked up on shiver there's um they're paying and even though i didn't get coin for that performance somebody is so yeah for sure um they are um yeah, they're definitely not. They're not destitute. They're not street people or anything like that. They're um, they're people who either come from out of town and have accommodations or um, live around town or are taking advantage of the festivities. So, if I join, do I have a contact person in the guild? And you said that I'm a quote journeyman, and that I assume means that there's opportunity for advancement. Yeah, yeah, there's, um, let's see here. Journeyman is um, like the first level above apprentice, and then there's master and guild official. Those are some of the only two other ranks. Okay. So the more well known you are, and um, when you start performing at the um, the Grand Playhouse of Lankamar on Carter Street, uh, that's when you get like the master rank. Become like one of the uh, like the famed performers of the city. You're not did sure. To, What's like, that? Who did I hand the entry fee to? And is there a contact for that? Or that yeah, yeah. Know? There's there's an ex checker at uh, at all the major theaters, and they okay. they, they keep notes of. Um, okay. Who's up to date? Who's paid and all that stuff? They won't try and shake you down for another. And to give you, um, you can get a tattoo if you want, or um, they'll give you papers. Where do they put the tattoo? Uh, wherever you want it. They uh, they don't do the tattoo themselves. They do that. Um, she says probably there's uh, the best place to go is the uh, the sepia the sepia needle, uh, probably just north of the uh, or just south of the night market. 
on uh, take the papers and then later decide what to do if it tattoo or not. Okay. And it's just the um it's the Harlequin masks. Okay. You know the one with the uh, the Greek ones, the the one laughing and the one yeah. crying. Does it change if based on your rank, or does the tattoo stay the same? Uh, you it kind of you can add to it. Okay. Awesome. I have papers. They are in the bag. All right. <laughs> Mary Poppins purse. So that's everyone's downtime, I guess. We're ready to resume meeting up and hopefully it's been enough time that Bracket has, has been able to get us some good info. So to help with that gathering of information, is that a knowledge local for me as well or no? Yeah, you can make a knowledge local check. Uh, okay. Ask around in the theater and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. You give yourself a plus two. Oh, uh, add two to this. I'll add two to that? Okay. Well, that when you said that. It's a... Yeah, the um, people are talking about um, there's a uh, there's a place where people go to get shiver. It's called uh, it's called Rook's Roost. It's uh, it's north of the Gallow Fields, and there's also um, sometimes there's shiver dealers in the night market. It's the neighborhood um, south of Temple Street, but north of Hazy Street um, between Carter and Wall Street. So for the purposes of the effect where shiver seems to be prominent um, that big blue area is about it's about the main the uh, the gallo fields is uh, the southernmost um, blank square and the night market is the northernmost blank square The uh, Rook's Roost is um, north of the Gallo Fields. And um, sometimes there's uh, the Shiver Dealers in the um, the night market. You've heard the name uh, Mog Lathar. Um well, all this she's going to share with the group, so everything that we're saying is good. Yeah, so they said that, um, yeah, you overhear a couple people um, talking about um, a hidden temple off of, uh, off of Cheap Street, north of the Street of the Gods. And um, I think it won't, well, I'd stay away from that place. I hear people go missing. Uh, where else are you going to get your shiver? Straight from the source. Cut out the middleman, right? That, why pay someone else to do it when you can just get it straight from the source? Log you, the uh, The spider god is named Mog. It's a famous Lankamarian god. Um, his temple's been in the city for hundreds of years it's in the same spot despite its popularity it doesn't seem to move up or down the street at all uh it's one of those established places so for them to be having some sort of schism with uh an offshoot group who's started another secret temple it's um it's it's noteworthy The uh, the spider god wanted to kill the gray mouser a lot, 
<laughs> in the stories, uh, the Lycamore stories. So he was like one of the big bad guys. Whenever, whenever um, Fritz Leiber needed uh, a bad guy to, to move the thing along, it'd be like, oh, priest of the spider god, or the spider god himself was chasing me, that kind of stuff. But there is an offshoot of that that seems to be peddling this drug. The um, Any other specifics that you want to know? How would one go to get it to the source? What is the procedure to do that? Uh, the source would be kind of difficult, but you could probably... Um, probably stake out some of the, uh, the dealers in the night market at some point and maybe have that lead you back to the source. Okay, so that's where... The person or persons I gained this information relayed that advice. Is that? Yeah, just like, um, yeah, don't involve me, though. You know. No, no, you... I don't even know your name. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Racker Nash, um, are you guys going to go to Lord Denal's tonight? That was the plan. Does anybody else want to do anything during the day before? No, I think we've, uh, at least Sami feels accomplished uh, having done individual stuff. So, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, Avis did stuff she usually does. So it's kind of like, it's, she's spending the day in the temple. This is actually, she got a lot of stuff done. All right. The gallery club, um, after dark. I assume, oh, I assume that, like uh, Luna came with us, and um, yeah, Luna and Zed are around. Um, I guess Zed would probably be looking to make another will save. Yeah, he's um, no longer fatigued. He seems to be coming to grips with whatever he's coming to grips with. Seems a little more chipper, a little less distracted. Uh, maybe the um, seeing the prophet get hopefully some help. Maybe eased his mind some. He doesn't talk about it though. So him and Bakai and Luna, um, I imagine would meet Zed, Arthur, and Avis, probably at the Fat Chance. And then we'd go from there to Lord Denal's meeting location. Yeah, so you down Carter Street. It's the very first night of the the festival, and um, if you've ever been to any multi day or multi-week festivals you know that it goes hard early mm -hmm. and uh mm -hmm. it kind of, <laughs> yeah he's um he's like a fine wine kind of like um amber brandy kind of guy he's like a, he's got like a extremely sophisticated palate the um you can tell that uh, what a bottle cost me um, I would say probably upwards of a gold rilk. So it's not um, it's not the bronze eagle swill that. Uh... I I'm gonna bring a bottle to Lord Denal because after having also dealt with um, whatever shook him from. So I'm bringing a bottle. I took the money off my sheet. Oh, that's extremely kind of you. Okay, so when you guys get there, um, you, you notice there's a lot of people coming and going now from the gallery. It's um, You've never seen it 
when it looks like it's actually open to the public. You've always seen it kind of like as just the place where uh, Lord Denau is kind of always hanging out on his own or maybe conducting a little business and stuff like that. Um, maybe he was hiding out. <laughs> you know, maybe this is his uh, little place this to... This is typical Lord Denau that we're going to learn about. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, you've never seen, like, People waiting out, uh, waiting in line up front to to get a table or anything like that. You know, but you get there who's, tonight, who's and there, uh, who's at the door? Johnson. Uh, uh, it is not Rackernash. It is. Um, it looks like a um, like a lower level kind of like Slayer, maybe someone who works for Rackernash, maybe one of his guys. And there's two of them. It's not just one. Do yeah. they recognize us? Uh, yes. Specifically, even though you haven't seen them before, uh, it looks like well, they were told. To me, did you say? No, I said uh, even though they haven't, you haven't seen these people before. They look like they're specifically looking out for you guys, in particular. Um, they've maybe been told what to look for, and there's uh, maybe a half dozen people in line waiting, and um, one spots you and, and gives the other guy a tap and. He, the other guy moves down past the line. Sorry, folks, it'll be a uh, be a little bit of a wait. It's a busy night. It's the uh, festival season's about uh, festival season in the other part of town. It's making it uh, more crowded than normal. But these uh, these people have had a reservation for quite some time, and uh, he kind of waves you guys up, up and in. So I kind of bet that it stands out in most crowds right now. Yeah, Avis and uh, Bakai as well. Kai's kind of like uh, and Luna, you know. As you guys, they all probably there because Asami probably looks clean and prettied up, whereas most street people here probably have cloaks on. And you know, I would imagine there's some attention there. Yeah, I would imagine the only person who maybe doesn't stand out is maybe Zed's kind of like um, kind of like an everyman sort of look to him. <clears throat> Everybody else has kind of got their own specific vibe to them, whereas Zed's just kind of like Zed. But with Bukai there all the time, it's um, she's pretty distinctive as well, and he's he's constantly babysitting her tonight. She's um, a little wilder than normal. <clears throat> I guess we get to let into our own special table. Yeah, you guys. Uh, yep, you go on in, and um, uh, Lord Denal's got like an area off in the back, kind of by himself. There's um, there's like a, a buffer of uh, free space, and then there's um, like a dining area, a bunch of tables and stuff like that. They're almost always unoccupied whenever you guys went in there. Um, but it's full. Place is packed. There's a uh, there's staff. There's um, people running up and down the stairs and stuff like that. Rackernash isn't there at the moment, um, but you know that he he also keeps an office down in the basement too. So he might be running some errands. And Lord Denau stands up. And he's got a big smile on his face, like huge smile, like. Waves you over with uh, with both hands. My friends. Avis presents the bottle. Oh, my dear. You shouldn't have. That is too kind. Too kind. I figured we could share it this evening a little bit. Definitely. It's, uh, it's a night of celebration. It's, uh, it's good to see you again. And then there's um, there's like a younger waitress, and she's like um, she starts taking orders, drinks, and stuff like that. Hopefully, we haven't caused you too much heartache. I no, not at all. It was um, it was me who uh, owe you um, an apology. I'm afraid my uh, my ham-fisted attempts at machination backfired, and um, and put you in a um, a difficult position. I I hear. 
I'm um, I'm not certain of the circumstances, but uh, the one we won't name specifically mentioned that um, there was some sort of trial and that um, your innocence or guilt hinged on your reappearance in the city. So it's good to see that there's an innocence and um, that my horrible idea of keeping the death of Popoff from the people who would most need to know um, didn't inconvenience you or harm any of you. I wouldn't have been able to live with myself. <laughs> and you shouldn't have seen this two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, quite a trial that it was. Uh, I'm sure Racking Nash told you I looked a little worse from where. He, uh, he doesn't say much. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't tell me much about you anymore. He used to. I'm beginning to think uh, he might be changing teams. I wouldn't steal him from you. Well, I, I wouldn't. Uh, I would never. Um, I would never keep him from uh, following whatever path he wanted to follow. He's a good man. He's um, served me honorably for these last several years. Without him, I dare say my business wouldn't be what it is. But please, please. What uh, what news of the city? What uh, are we in a private room? Or yeah, open it's it's, it's um it's a busy dining room um, where there's like um a lot of open space between you and the other diners, and uh, there's enough noise that. Um, would it be um, something I could do subtly to cast a message on us to keep our conversation to us, or would that not be possible in the room with the busyness? Yeah, you you wouldn't need to, okay. unless someone was like specifically like leaning leaning into the open area, specifically trying to hear. You're fine. Tell me you're better at telling tales than I. Um, what did we want to tell him? You don't need we to. We would have planned this before. Oh, okay. But what we would want to present to him. I know we were coming to see him because, uh, what's his face Same came to see him. Um, we were invited to come see him for some reason. I don't remember what Rekinesh told us. Maybe to. Oh, so we're not going. There was a reason we're him. coming here, and I don't. Remember. It's not to prove that we're alive. Yeah, it wasn't to really in, in the mansion, but it's just basically to reconnect. Hey, we're still around, and uh, still have the Rev employee right here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but we do have something else to worry about too, and I'm sure he's aware. of you know, all the, the talk of our death was greatly exaggerated. <laughs> yeah, the rumors of your demise. That's what it was. The um. Somebody find a way. So it, she'll, you know, in the conversation, Isami will gladly share a little bit about the adventures. Hey, we were only down there for three days, not even like a day and a half, maybe. Yeah. Uh, but it there sure did feel like a month. And then we came up here, and it in fact was a month. <laughs> so that was weird, isn't it? <laughs> Indeed it is. Um, if you think back and remember, there is um, uh, a sorcerer's background for Lord Danau. He's got mm -hmm. um, some skill with it. Of course, he's not at your level anymore. Um, you know, he had an interest in occult matters and stuff like that. So he's not... He's not dubious of your claim. 
he's um, he's interested in, in what you're telling him. That's yeah. And and so she's gonna turn into storyteller mode and relay the adventures we had and the encounters we had, and I'll leave out the details of of like Avis getting butchered by the. Um, bad touches that was draining your energy. This is turned it to Avis, tell everything yeah, positive. Make it sound <laughs> heroic. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is what she does. She tells stories. It's going to be heroic. But, um, you know, the whole activity was tiring as a whole. But, we, all, you know, the undead things we found down there, um, the faceless creatures that we fought, specifically spends more time than she should in the stage room because that, you know, identifies with, with her. But then, you know, the fountain that was never ran out of water, um, the the spiders, the spiders themselves, but then the mechanical things. So it seemed like it was much older in that region than what we, we, we would run into here in the city. So she just retells it all. And, you know, maybe some people at the table were like, you know, I, I remember we defeated that encounter, but. I don't remember being that awesome, you know. <laughs> so, I don't know if I ever showed Avis a picture of Lord Dano. Yeah, that's him. There. Yeah, he's still described no, as a pallid middle-aged man of wealth. Yeah, no, oh. I hadn't seen Dano. You've shown Ragnar yeah. Nash, but I haven't seen Lord Dano. A uh, handsome man, but he's kind of got like a uh, like a pallid grayness to him. Um, mm -hmm. He's um. He's taking it all in and he's trying to you can tell when you're you're telling the stories, he's trying to um he's trying to identify things. You can tell he's trying to like you know how if I would describe something to you, you'd want to make like spellcraft checks and stuff like that. Yeah, well she leaves out like any treasure. You know. We fought this thing, we defeated it, we went to the next room. You know, so mm -hmm. it's not gonna be like we spent forty five minutes looking for treasure and this is what we found. No, we're not doing Actually that. you guys never really did that. You kinda <laughs> you kinda mostly jumped from room to room to room and we did search bodies, but yeah, I don't recall like searching behind things. Yeah. Uh, it seemed like every time you guys stopped to do something, something else happened. Yeah. Every time we stopped, Avis kept getting stabbed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we kind of couldn't take time. No, it was, and it was running battles and yeah. all that stuff. And... It goes into the details of the puzzle doors and say there's more to be discovered down there. Some of the doors we didn't get through before we came out. Time passed differently. Um so it felt like to us a day and a half ended up being a month, you know. Uh, Remarkable. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I can imagine. Only a day and a half. We, um... Well, Rackernash couldn't find any trace of you. Um, rumors... Rumors were that um, the last place you were spotted was uh, the keyhole uh, he pressed everyone he could in the neighborhood um, the um, the gambler um, Mr. McComb I believe um, no no sighting of you Tommy's like who's that <laughs> she knows it's fatty, but doesn't know by that name, Mr. McComb. Yeah, she never was ever calls him that. So. You could tell that um, Mr. McComb kind of uh, garners a little bit of respect, and at the same point in time, um, Lord Denal um, from other circles garners that same kind of level of respect. Um, it's kind of like a different social level in the city. That uh, even even not in his presence, he still addresses him rather formally, not knowing him. Um, he says that, um, yeah, even the um, even the shopkeeper, the um, um, Mister Pickett, I think uh, Pickett uh, Racker Nash said his name was, um, couldn't recall you even dropping by, so. We thought that suspicious, so he, uh, we kept an eye on the place for a bit. Um, or Mr. Pickett had a visit with the same one that you did, that we don't speak of. 
I see that uh, that explains a fair bit. That, um, my friends, is um, one of the most powerful men in the city. And um, you see what he's capable of. I'm glad you've come to some sort of accord. I, um, I felt horrible thinking that um, me trying to hide the death of Popov led you essentially to this situation that you're in. You were in. I'm. Um, I do not think he likes me. Well, you would be surprised if. I thought to myself the same thing, but I've had Rackernash dig around, and you know when they don't like you, when that man doesn't like you. It's, uh, it's unmistakable. And the fact that we're enjoying an evening, and um, we've had conversation with him. And this very nice bottle of wine. Precisely. And we are um, none the worse to wear for it. Um, I don't think he dislikes us. So there's that. I think a lot of it stems from the book. I think by procuring the book for Popoff, I um, it may have started things in motion that uh, the people in his circles were not um, too excited about. So um, by doing what we did, which was the right thing. Um, done in the wrong way. But it was the right thing. I think we've come to uh, an understanding. Him and I, anyway. Um, I, believe my I believe my standing in the um, Money Changers Guild protected me somewhat, but... Um, whatever sort of respect for you he gained it's not um, it's not nothing so I'll drink to that hey this toasts with him he did not know um about Maria my mother I got the distinct impression that when I was describing the genesis of the, our situation he was intrigued troubled and at the same point in time somewhat aghast perhaps he's had experience with uh, a creature such as this in the past we had giant luna on our side we were fine giant luna is a force to be reckoned with i hear <laughs> <laughs> So they say at the Midnight Theater, anyway. The rumors. The, R the rumors. What's going on our list of stories? The story. Of Giant <laughs> Luna. The tale of Giant Luna. If you... Um, Popoff's house is for sale. I, uh, I don't know if you know that I, I bought it. 
she clear out the things that are dangerous inside it? Because <laughs> uh, I don't think there was anything dangerous left after you after went, we destroyed it. <laughs> after you went through the um, Rackernash said that the um, the distinct odor of brimstone um, kind of dissipated after the, he aired the place out. So. Uh, you guys know for a fact that it's probably the um, the closet might have moved on to uh, to Malagris as opposed to staying in the house by himself. But that was the uh, that was the only thing really the only real dangerous thing that was left over. There was um, there was the secret door in the in the basement that nobody really checked out but he is uh he is selling the property um we but he had it, a reason to leave i think like somebody was affected by something yeah yeah it was it was uh remember, yeah. there was a tough fight in the basement yeah i think there was a, like a bunch of skeletons or something in the base skeleton dogs or something i forget How much for this house? Well, for a friend, I could um, I could sell it for um, fifty gold rilks. I don't have money on hand, but you are holding some of it. Yes, yes, and I'm aware. I'm, um, I was good. It was good to know that um, you stopped off at the Iron Tacoon. Arab and Bowl uh, informed me that uh, you have a, a piece. Um, particular uh music box that they tried to get tried to procure from you but uh you decided was too valuable oh it's okay it's uh, out, of, out, of, out of character i was waiting for whoever had it to say something because <laughs> it doesn't have it it's uh it's, i it, didn't Put it on my list, but I yeah. just see no one else carried it. Is it, it the Sylvan box? Uh, I'm not sure what's it's the music see. box. Is it the, the Sylvan sheet. box with lapis inlaid? Let's see here. Small engraved so, wooden uh, wooden box adorned with prancing Sylvan creatures set with shards of lapis lazuli. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Avis is the one that has it. Okay. Cool. Now we know. All right. Go ahead and remove the the one in the party sheet then. Yeah. All right. So is with, Lord Denal interested in it? I I could I could take a look at it. I could give you a proper valuation. Those two sometimes like that with items. Um, sometimes they're a bit out of their depth. They're they're good lads, but they're uh, they're a little green. Um, so you don't in her pocket and set the box out in front of him. Oh, nice. He says. Um, is a. It's mostly um, mostly lower end items that they're uh, that they see there. Um, an item of this craftsmanship um, probably wouldn't have crossed their crossed their paths too many times. And he um, he opens it up, and this is interesting. Hmm. And he's. Closes it a few times, opens it a few times, make sure all the things are working, and it's the same song over and over again. Which like, hmm. I would imagine, um, I would imagine if you'd have taken the two fifty from them, that uh, one of them would have gotten fired. So it's probably a good thing that you chose not to. I would probably the most I would be able to give you would be a hundred and thirty silver smearnux, I think. It is a fine, fine piece. Uh, the inner workings are uh, are spectacular. This is just not a big market for these these items. I mean, it's um, by the time I get the proper buyer and the right place for someone to see it, um, four or five months have gone by. I because we're friends, I would. 150, I think, would be the most. But like I say, your your 
your refusal probably saved one of those gentlemen their job. So it all works out. They're good boys. I wouldn't have wanted to have that uh, discussion with them. Of course, you're um, you're free to take it anywhere else and have it uh, have it appraised. One hundred fifty gold drills? Uh, no, silver smerdex. Silver okay, smerdex. okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> so I thought that's worth three times the value of the house. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. So the let's see the house. I wonder if. It... See, I'm torn on what to do with this because I'm sure that he's giving us a fair price. But I we also... learned what the price was last time. Are you sure it was this that we were, they were trying to sell? Yeah, they were going to yeah. give you more than what it was worth because mm -hmm. they didn't know what it was worth. Because because they're green. Yeah. Um, There's Popoff's house there, the ground floor. The second floor. It's so, all darkness. All is it? Darkness. Oh, okay. Um, left the lights out. We need to pay the power bill. <laughs> let's take off the line of sight. There we go. There we go. There we go. The attic. Fair sized in the. If we um, got this particular house, what would we do with it? Base of operations. I am currently without a home right now, so. Um. So we said it was 150 silver smearlux. How yeah. much would that give us towards the house price? Ah, uh, that would be. Party. That'd be 15 rilks. 15 gold rilks, yeah. I think Arthur's. Since Arthur wants to. Arthur's willing to buy it wholesale because he needs somewhere to live. Yeah, I, th I think Arthur wants to buy it for himself. Oh, okay. I think yeah, Arthur's. Got you guys are willing. To, you guys are willing to use it. Arthur wants yeah. to live somewhere. I would have mm -hmm. pitched in, but that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, Sami has a place here, and if our, Arthur's been sleeping at Zed's and on Sami's floor, so mm -hmm. he probably wants a place of his own. Like I said yeah, earlier, I do not have the money quite on me, but you're holding a lot of it. Okay. Oh, you might be able to simply deduct. I mean, with the with the lapis box, though, we could do the trade out. Yeah. Since it was, it's some it's a piece of loot we've been wanting to get rid of anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's fifteen smear ducks, right? Not smear ducks. Excuse me, cold drill. Uh, yeah. Fifteen ducks. Yeah. So you just got to come up with thirty-five more. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah you, if you you have notes of uh, notes of credit with them and stuff like that, that's uh, yeah. or notes on deposit with them, that's. Yeah. yeah, let's do that. He's let's aware. The, the, the music box towards Arthur's house, a.k.a. a potential semi-base of operations. There you go. I will say out of character. I see that little connection to the sewers. Yep. That could be helpful mm -hmm. in the future. Yes. That's, yeah. Yep, I like it. And that door uh, wasn't just a normal door, if I remember. No, right. it was that like... Um, security safety door of the year, yeah. <laughs> the so door gonna, was... So um, off my inventory, if you want to put 15 ropes towards the house from us. You mean 35? Oh, oh, 15, that's what you mean. 15 from 15. the box, yeah. If he wants okay. the gold, the, the currency immediately, we can cover that, and Arthur can... Oh, yeah, we can cover us, it. Or he can just... Mark no, no, he's got it. He's he knows what everybody owes or what he owes everybody and your deposits that you have with him and stuff like that. He's uh, that's his job. I surprisingly, haven't put any deposits with him. Probably yeah, yeah he can just take that from my uh, from my deposits. Yeah, he can just um, he just mark it off as leisure and boom, done. Transfer the deed to you, um, all that stuff. So I imagine with a house like this going for sale, that certainly within town another one would be available. You know, if there was interest in others purchasing places. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you got a real good price. Normally, you can make a knowledge local check, and normally, um, they tell you what something like in that neighborhood would go for, roughly in the same size. Yeah, and which street is Popoff's house on? Popoff's house, house yes. 
There you go. That's Asami's real estate knowledge it's right there. It's not great. Not great at all. <laughs> it's um, a house. <laughs> right here. It's just a house. Give me that much. Well, she's it, used to farmhouses. You know, it makes sense. This, this, um, this square here on the that map. And here's your neighborhood map. And it is this mm. little guy right here. Yeah, see it down there. There he is there. And no not a bad spot. Yeah, and it's a long. It's in between Carter and Wall Street. I see. Yes, yeah. it's uh, it's it's kind of near yeah. the very uh, close uh, to Marsh Gate. It seems. Yeah, and it's also near the uh, the keyhole. Keyhole is over here. Um, the, mm -hmm. the famed Silver Eel Tavern is just a couple streets away. Yeah, so that's not a that's a pretty good spot too. Good base of operations. Does anybody else have? Makes sense. Temple is not a great use makes sense that the sorcerer would take over the sorcerer's uh, house. Does anybody have the um, knowledge local? Anybody else? Oh, oh, oh there are you rolled. Yeah, pathetic. <laughs> I, yeah, Avis hasn't been here long enough. <laughs> okay, let's see if Zed has it. Yeah, no. No, I know Luna does, but let's let's see untrained. Let's know. let's see what Luna says about the real estate market. Luna says um off to the side later on out of earshot from Lord Tanal. She's 50 gold rooks is a steal. You could sell that tomorrow, probably for a hundred. Probably. Although there's probably a reason why he's only selling it for 50. Maybe there's some lingering effect from the sorcerer. Maybe the locals are frightened of it. Uh, maybe he's had a hard time selling it. Although it's only been sounds like a good, sounds like a fine place to live. Then very well, but yeah, you got a good deal. I think this Denal guy's a bit of a sucker. Luna says, "Well, you're not." I think you want. I think personally, he just wants to cut as many ties from sorcerers as he can. That could be. Could be. Maybe I'll start watching them. Maybe he's in on all this. She gets. Luna gets a little paranoid. Jags. You've heard it before. Um, sometimes she's right. Sometimes she's not. She kind of sussed it out a little bit with um, Jane Pickett. But it turns out it wasn't him to not be trusted. Congratulations on a new house. I think you're the only one that actually owns their dwelling. Maybe, uh, maybe I mean, Avis owns the building there too. I, I mean, yeah. I think you're renting it. Yeah. Or do you own it? Yeah. I'm renting to potentially own it at some point. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, on the Street of the Gods, a lot of times renting is better because uh, when something better comes up further on down the street, a lot of uh, successful religions will move down the street. The um, You get more uh, prestigious the closer you are, get to the river. Uh, the closer you are to the Marsh Gate, the closer you are to not being in Lankamar. <laughs> so she's pretty close to Marsh Gate. Although... Despite being kind of popular, <laughs> despite being in that spot, um, yeah, it's a uh, it's got a good little crowd every day, which not everybody has. Arthur, would you like those? Would you like me to send you those uh, maps via Discord? Uh, sure. Okay, I'll I'll put them up during the week. Yeah, just in case I need to uh, do some renovations or find anything important in there. 
I'll go over it. Uh, I'm not sure that there was anything left over from when you guys. There was um, Rakanesh kind of cleaned it out. He has been kind of um, uh, Lord Denial has been has offered it up for sale, um, and he would offered it for eighty gold rilks. That's what it was the actual selling price. Um, but he wasn't getting any any hits on it, and even that's discounted. Normally, a place like this would be. 100, 120, 130 gold rooks, depending on how nicely appointed it was. Um, but um, Rakernash comes up at some point and joins everybody. He was just downstairs. Um, he had to make sure that the, the staff was taken care of and stuff like that. Uh, but later on, you get talking to him and um, he congratulates you on, on the house. And he says that um, he uh, they they repaired the window that your friend broke, and that uh, it's in ship shape. It's in ship shape. The uh, all the bones from the skeletons have been removed. Um, it's been tidied up. There's a woman that would go in and sweep every couple weeks. Uh, we'll get the key back from her because this this place has been on. Unmanned for a couple months now. Uh, he said he does tell you though that um, the locals are scared of it. Every once in a while, um, they talk about the the black hound of the sorcerer, how it uh, keeps them all up at night. Ray tell. says that uh, a lot of the a lot of the local neighbors um, complain about the baying of some hound and um, there's some kind of rumor that it's um, some kind of ghost dog about the size of a bear that uh, mm. roams the neighborhood with cool red eyes baying on the uh, the darkest of all nights He's, he says I've been around there a bunch of times at night and I've never heard it I've never seen anything like that. People around there sometimes get suspicious when they uh, they knew Popoff was a sorcerer. He never tried to hide. He actually kind of relished in the um, the fear that it would cause the neighbors. So a house that everyone's afraid of seems like a perfect house for Arthur to own. I'll right? keep the tradition alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So he shakes your hand. He congratulates you. He says it's a it's a it's in good shape. The uh, up in the attic, there's no um, no water or any sign of um, any sign of damage or anything. Like that before I joined the Slayers, I was um, I thought I might have been a carpenter. So it's uh, that that house has good bones. It's a good house. And of course, you're right near uh, Carter Street, so you get the first month of all the festival goers stumbling through your neighborhood, pissing in your front yard. <laughs> People will learn to avoid my house. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they might. By the way, I was able to find out a few things. Uh, Mog Lathar. Moglathar is um, some sort of spider idol. Um, I wasn't able to track down the actual location of this temple. Um, it's a pretty well-hidden secret. Um, I couldn't uh, couldn't bluff my way through. Wanting to join, I did that a couple times, and um, I got uh, I got accosted in the um, in the night market by a couple gentlemen who thought they were tougher than they were. Um, one guy left with a split lip, and another guy left with a black eye. But uh, I'm on their radar now. But what I was able to find out was that um, this temple has some sort of litany on certain nights of the month 
in that um, the shiver dealers are somehow connected to it. I couldn't couldn't place any. I was able to um, I was able to buy some from a person who was pretty low down the chain. Um, probably a a person just trying to make a few extra extra iron ticks to get some more of themselves. So it's the best I could do. And he produces a couple um, a couple vials of this. It's kind of like a kind of like a cloudy liquid. Um, it's kind of like a milky white cloudy liquid that's, um, it's got sort of a aspirin kind of smell to it. And, um, he says like a dose like this would probably keep you awake for about six hours or so. And if you did this for the better part of two, three weeks. You'd probably find you'd have a tough time functioning without it. He says when I did it before, um, he did it in a, like a powder form and he sniffed it. Um, this is um, kind of like a watered down version. And I got this for two bronze eggles at the... Um, Outside of the Gallo Fields, there's a there's a place called uh, Rook's Roost. Um, that's a shiver den. Um, I tried to get in there, and uh, word had already gotten out that I was trying to find out where the temple was, and uh, they wouldn't let me in. So that's where I'm at. Says the um, doesn't seem to be that. Um, doesn't seem to be that open, but everybody seems to know about it. So I guess if you want to buy shiver in that neighborhood, you have to be, you have to know somebody who knows somebody. Have you met with any of the members of the Brotherhood proper? Yeah, I did, and they um, they tried to uh, run me out. And uh, like, I, I don't know if they were members of the Brotherhood proper, but they seemed um, seemed pretty intent on giving me a beating. But uh, yeah, they weren't anything. Did they wear any armor? Have any weapons on them? Just leathers. Uh, one flashed a blade, but uh, I pulled my sword. And he ran. Is did he notice? What's that? Something happened over there. Did you notice what I did? I sent you a message. Oh yeah, yeah. It was um it's just a bruise. And he's thank you. Yeah, we <laughs> Yeah, he got uh, like a couple knuckles on his hand, uh were a little swollen, his right hand. And um not swollen anymore. Not, the, he's not even really bruised anymore. Uh, he doesn't have any cuts on him or anything like that. He doesn't really seem like he's basically those guys are fuck all essentially. Um, but that's the kind of level of um, security that or secrecy, I guess, is the better word that this uh, this brotherhood has. It's um, he said I thought I thought about going back and then just grabbing another one and then beating it out of them, but um, they didn't seem like the type that would crack that easily either. Um, he did obviously maybe didn't try hard enough. Yeah, maybe not. I don't have your skills, Arthur. Just the schlub with mm -hmm. a just the schlub with a sword and knife, but yeah, it's um, if 
you wanted to look around, I would check the um, check the night market. I would start there. Or I'd try to get into Rook's Roost or maybe even the... Um, have you seen what's going on in Nightmare Alley? What a disaster that is. It used to be called Beggar's Alley. Um, I used to go to... Uh, I used to go to Polk's Tavern, and um, every once in a while, uh, me and the boys would have some jobs from um, from Polk. Actually, when I was um, when I was just an apprentice, we used to do a lot of work for Polk, and uh, there was always some beggars in that alley. Usually professionals, you know, like uh, normally. You can tell the difference between a person who's really hard up and, uh, and a person who's who's working. And it was generally, it's called Beggar's Alley because most of the people there were actually professionals, like working guild beggar professionals. Whereas now, it's, uh, it's an encampment of the terrified. The stench of death was palpable. I felt uneasy crossing um, into the gallow fields. And it takes a fair bit for me to feel uneasy. Do you have any leading theories? I don't know. Just... uh, the people there are generally are um, genuinely spooked. Hmm. You said there was another uh, another bunch. You wanted me to be on the lookout for. Ah, uh, yes. Are you familiar with a group known as Those Who Hear? Ah, yes. Yes, I, I am. Um, a group of mystics. Um, they had a warehouse not far from your new home. They've since cleared out. Uh, I think that there was a connection with the uh, temple that uh, lovely Avis is now good enough to occupy. Um, I think that, um, whatever you guys got up to sort of disbanded because that, uh, that warehouse is, um, it's been fallow as far as I know since that time. So maybe they've shifted operations to someplace else. Uh, you might want to check the, um... There's a bunch of bookstores and um, um, like basically um, as, I guess like spook shops where people are claiming to sell like relics of the gods, uh, various holy texts, the um, stuff like that. Um, you, generally find them north of the uh, the gallo fields there's um there's a place called bookbinders row you can check out um whispers that uh whoever didn't perish from the uh, the temple of shithakwa might have taken up somewhere around there Interesting. There's also, um, you never know, too, the um, the people who had the, uh, the impromptu. I guess it was a temple of some sort at that warehouse. Um, they may have just moved out of uh, precaution. They could be anywhere. I don't know exactly, but I've heard the name before. Uh, Popoff used to used to mention it. He said he uh, procured some sort of idol from them, 
and that uh, it spoke to him in his sleep. He says, Lord Danau can tell you more about that. And Zed, uh, Zed's kind of listening, and at the mention of the idol, he kind of looks up. And you know for a fact that he did take the idol from Popoff's house. Uh, I wonder if I still have a picture of that. Hang on here. I think I do. This is what it looked like. The golden statuette. The speaker in dreams, the whisperer in the darkness. This was supposed to be some sort of effigy of him. Can I do a religion on him? Absolutely. You don't think it's a god proper. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, from your time spent in the city of Lankamar, you know that there are, um, on the Street of the Gods, very, very few that you would, um, you would put in the same category of, as uh, Ita. Um, there's a lot of people attribute godlike powers to a person with uh, spellcasting ability. You don't know if that's like some kind of alien creature, uh, some kind of interpretation of a uh, thought. Maybe some somebody might like maybe like a sorcerer or somebody posing as that. It doesn't seem like any sort of religion that you know. Like you know the god death. You know the spider god. You know. The rat god, you know the um, the gods of Lankamar, you know Arth, you know all these major religions that are actually, you're pretty sure gods. Uh, you don't know that this is an actually a god. I don't. I don't get a sense that this. This doesn't sound like feel like any god that I've seen here. It's definitely some sort of um, some sort of iconography, though. Uh, you don't actually like. Maybe Zed describes this to you, or maybe Rackernash goes from memory because he saw it a bunch of times on Popoff's table before um, Popoff actually died. For the the because this you remember this is the payment that he took to. Get Lord Denal to check out the Book of Ibon for him for the cultists of Shithakwa. This is the the payment that he got. And that was his notes. And that um, the first time you guys were out of town for any significant amount of time, Zed's place was ransacked. And this was the only thing that was missing. I don't know if Zed wants to tell you more about that. So we'll leave that for next time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's when Nock, or the clone of Nock, shot, saw me one shot her down. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The doppelganger. Yeah. Who were connected with the Temple of Shithakwa. Because you saw the other doppelganger was... Um, well, basically, he was feeding on dreams or nightmares. Right in this, right in that, uh, the very foyer of the uh, Church of Itia. Ita. 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 You'll get it at some point, right? <laughs> I will. I'm getting it. The yeehaw helps. Yeah, the yeehaw. Yeah, yeah, the yeehaw helps. Mm-hmm. All right. So, um, over the next couple days, uh, what what do you characters want to do? And that'll that'll give me a rough idea of 
where this is going to go next. I mean, with the festival going on, I don't know how much poking and prodding we can do. Well, with the cover of so many people, we might find it easier to get through the crowd we to might. get where we want to go. The other um, option is we have an entrance to sewers. We do? You think you do? Um, I know that... We'll probably want to have a housewarming party for Arthur and see where everything is. Yeah. yeah. I know that Avis is going to want to keep more of an eye, maybe do a little bit of outreach in that direction. Both yeah. For bringing more popularity, but also letting me potentially drawing in Racker Nash as long as he has better eyes than her. Unless he's worried about getting seen, which would be like somebody else. No. Nope. Um, just as a extra set of eyes and doing an outreach as far as helping feed people here and there. Okay. Also, but also giving us the ability to look around. Okay. Um, the the door in the basement at Popoff's house. I will give you a description of that. That was the only unexplored area. Uh, at the point at that point, it was rickety wooden steps lead down to a plain dark cellar. Five crutch figures can be seen near a door on the other side of the chamber, and the door, if you recall, was more like a like a ship's hatch than an actual. Um, door door it was made of metal it was round it was kind of it wasn't a gear door but it wasn't a normal door either it was kind of like in between so it had like a circular um, like a wheel that you cranked left and right almost like a like a bank vault kind of deal um, you're not sure if it is a vault down there or if, if it's a tunnel that leads to another area. You did specifically detect magic there. And I will tell you the magic that you detected was um, medium conjuration or moderate conjuration. You don't know if it was like some kind of trap that Popoff had set or something else. Um, but because that was, that was like a really hairy fight that you guys had on the stairs with, uh, skeletal dogs. And, uh, that's, that was the first time that, uh, Bakai almost, I think Bakai got dismissed because of, um, the, the skeletal dogs attacking her or something. It was either that or, um, Zed had to like give up a bunch of his energy to her to keep her there. Um, it was I remember that fight being rough, and when it was done, we were out of spells or low on spells and hurt. And yeah, and and you had the you had the book that you came for, and right. you knew Rakonash was outside waiting and stuff like that. So you didn't investigate. So this was the one area that you. So do you guys think that that'd be an area that you'd want to investigate? I say we open it up. Okay. Yeah, I think that well, one author would want to check out his new house and we'd go help him with that and okay I, I definitely i think that's worth looking into okay um, we'll start there next time and then we'll go from there okay all right sounds good good game guys yeah good game take care good night everybody good night see some of you later yes <laughs> <laughs> I'm just surprised we didn't have any... It was weird, just the three of us.